guys, good morning. Welcome back to another video. Uh, today, as you can see, we've got the tractor and sprayer on. We are gonna go and spray off some grass plots, ready for reseeding. So we're over on what we call our assist plots. So there are 14 plots here, about a hectare each in size, two and a half acres, um, that are used for sheep um, with cell grazing and set stocking. Uh, and eight of them are getting sprayed off today to be reseeded. So excuse my shadow, but this is a map of where we are. So we've just pulled in here to the gateway, um, and so there's the 14 plots here. There's actually two more at the end, so they're not all on this map. Um, and anything that is not permanent pasture, so there's one, two, three, four there that we're not gonna spray. All the rest of them in there are getting sprayed off. You can see here what the different types of uh, plots are if I move out of the way. So we've got Agritech, nature-based, and permanent pasture. So there's three different types of uh, grass variety. Uh, and then within that, some of them get sex stocked uh, and some of them get cell grazed. Then also within that, some of them are drained and some of them are undrained. So there's a lot going on, but basically we've got a sprayer here with enough um, glyphosate and water mixed in it to do the eight plots. I'm gonna do the bulk of the spraying with the big sprayer and then uh, Phil's gonna come with the quad bike and the little boom sprayer. We've got a little two meter boom sprayer and he's gonna do everything that's tight to the fence, so I haven't got to worry about getting too tight. But I'll just do the big bits in the middle and, uh, and Phil will do around the outside. So I've just got the first paddock sprayed here. Uh, if I swap the screen round on here, you see the coverage map. If I zoom in, you see that I've left a margin there around the outside for Phil to do with the boom sprayer. So he'll tidy it around the edges for me, which is great. So uh, what will take longer than actually doing these plots, because it only took me about five minutes to spray it, is folding the sprayer up and unfolding it and doing the paperwork between every plot. So I'm gonna fold it up now a minute. So the first thing I need to do is uh, lift the sprayer up in the air. So on the joystick here, left hand button, lifts the arms up. I'm then gonna do what's called locking the pendulum. So I need, normally there should be a little um, cover on here, but it's fallen off. So there's a button on the top there that I hold. Let's see if I can do it with one hand. Hold that and press a button on the top here. And that locks the pendulum right at the top of the sprayer. I then need to hold the same button, push the middle two buttons up, and that folds the outer booms in. You can see those guys wrapping around the back of the sprayer now. Keep my finger on the same side button there press up on the one that lifts the wings up. That folds the main parts of the booms in. And then what we're gonna do is try and line up that guide there with the bar on the edge of the sprayer there. Should hover above it, like so. And then we just push down on this one here, puts them in the cradles. That's him sat down. Take the pressure off the spool. So now none of these will do anything. So I'm pressing the buttons there now. I know it's working, there's no oil pumping. And that's us. So what we'll do now is uh, head on to the next plot. Right, I made a bit of a start here. I've sprayed four of the plots now. We're just going into the fifth one. Um, I'm doing it a bit differently to how I normally spray. And I'll explain a bit more about that uh, in a minute when we jump back in the cab. But I gotta keep jumping out every plot, opening gates. Uh, tying them back. I'll leave them open so Phil can get in and out. Ten foot gateways and a sprayer as big as that one uh, can be a bit tight. It's not the easiest thing to get in and out, but we're in. Matchy matchy with the tractor. Focus. Unfolding. So I don't know why I'd never thought about it before, but I'm gonna spray the headlands in manual mode. Um, well, I have been spraying them in manual mode, and I go on to spray sort of the arable ground in manual mode on the headlands as well. 
That way, as soon as I want to start in the corner here, as soon as I press the um, master valve switch on, spray will start coming out of the nozzle and I can start moving, rather than me moving and then a little delay and uh, it didn't know whether to start or stop. So that's what we're going to do. The mount that you are currently on has given notice to die, so it might fall off the uh, windscreen at any point. Do a little bit of paperwork here and we will get ourselves going. So this is the fifth plot out of eight that I need to spray. So we are cracking on through them. And yeah, you just put away and you, you start spraying. I'm going to get slow. The only thing this sprayer hasn't got is um, boom leveling, which would be nice. Um, and also a digital tank level indicator. So I could see on the screen here how much is left in the tank. It's got a side tube on the front like a lot of slurry tankers have, which is handy enough. So Yeah, we're doing stuff. I back back up to the fence. Again, leaving myself a couple of meters off the fence for fill to fill in with the bike sprayer. I adjust my level on the booms. Open the valve and we're spraying. And it is as easy as that. I don't actually know the reasoning behind reseeding, whether it's to do with the sort of drop off in grass growth or um, the amount of weeds that are here, they want to just reset it all. I don't know, or they want to change the grass variety to something to new. All of the above could be a possibility. Right, so now I've sprayed the headland, I just press one button on my screen, which puts the um, sections into auto. So now I backed up from where I got into the corner, I open the valve, and then when I get onto a piece of ground with the sprayer that hasn't been covered yet, uh, the relevant sections will open. So now, for example, I'm overlapping that side a little bit, so the sprayer is currently spraying on the left. The way that these paddocks sort of work, you do one headland and then it's sort of one and a bit passes down the middle, so it takes longer to fold up, as I said, to do the paperwork for each paddock uh, than it does to get in and spray them. Right, so I've just been out and changed the nozzle there somewhere, you can't quite see. Um, I carry a load of spares in the toolbox on the sprayer, which is about there. Um, nozzles, bodies, um, end caps, anything you might need really if, um, if something falls off or breaks. The nozzles do just wear out after a while, you put so much water through them. Um, so yeah, we're now ready to fold up. So we'll fold up and go to the next field. So uh, you know I said the camera mount was on its way out. There's the sucky bit still stuck to the window and there is what the sucky bit should be attached to the plastics all snapped inside if anyone knows a good window suction mount uh, let me know in the comments because I've had two of these now and they've both done exactly the same thing they've broken off inside there there's no way of fixing them they just they've snapped so um, yeah I need a new one of those that's got uh, that sort of mount so I can screw my Joby quick fit to the top yeah, let me know.
wind's starting to get up. Luckily, I've only got one plot left to uh, spray. I've got a thorn in my shoe. It's actually in my sock. Right. One more plot, Gus. Just realised how lucky I was. Just realised how lucky I was when the uh, mount broke and it fell off here. It landed down beside Gus on his um, bed there, but we've got a bowl of water there that the brand new GoPro narrowly avoided. That'd have been a uh, terrible way to end the day. I don't know if you can see him very well out in the field there. We've got a series of trampolines uh, there for the sheep. A bit of a recreational activity for them. If they get bored, they can just jump on the trampoline uh, with their mates. Yeah, Andy was the one that instigated the uh, sheep and trampoline movement. Something he feels very passionate about getting sheep involved in sort of gymnastics and that so yeah that's what that is out there right i've just finished spraying the last paddock over here just thought it was interesting can you guys see that line across the field there dark green that is all rushes so normally along that line it goes right over to the fence um there is an electric fence and this field is split in half that way and they have uh cells that you go that way and also that way but that little line of ground never gets trodden on or eaten or anything because it's always underneath a live fence. So it'll be a good job to clean them all up here with the glyphosate or the uh, fire in a can as they call it. So I'm gonna fold up for the last time and head back. We'll either see what Phil's about helping put the boom spray together for the quad bike or um, I'm gonna have some lunch first. I'm, I'm well late for lunch. Um, and yeah, we'll see what's, see what's on this afternoon. Right, just had lunch. Now, how do you know someone's been fiddling with your sprayer whilst you've been away from it? That is how. That was not left out. And if I was a betting man, I would say the jug that lives inside will be missing. Pesky Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm after a jug thief. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've just pinched it for a second. I'll make sure I put it back. Yeah. Me and you've got to just go and do some cow Put the stuff. In them there. Just dump this one. Some bloke used to run a college, you know. Thinking about getting that printed on a t-shirt for when we uh, hit 10,000 subs. Picture of Dr. Phil's face with, I used to run a college, you know. And then like another t-shirt with an arrow pointing that says, he used to run a college, you know. What do you reckon? Right, so Phil has just taken off all the nozzles so you can see they are missing. They have a little filter that sits up inside here and they're all bunged up with rubbish. So he's taking them inside to clean them and then we'll flush a load of water through it. And hopefully this sprayer then will be ready to do the little bits around the outside that I haven't done uh, tomorrow whenever Phil wants to do it. So whilst he's doing that, I might as well unhook this thing. Uh, normally when you spray glyphosate, you, um, you really need to wash the sprayer out afterwards. But the next thing that this sprayer will be used for is spraying off our corn stubbles before they get ploughed up so i'm not so worried about it i'll wash it out properly when we finish doing that um, before we put on pre-emergence so as long as i remember phil's got me jugged hopefully it will be good Not bad reversing, if I do say so myself. Right, so I'm just gonna unhook this now. Um, what type of hitch is this? I don't actually know what it's called. Obviously this is the one we always use for the spray out. It sits in these rails. Um, yeah, I don't know what that is actually called, but if you know, let me know in the comments. Right, sprayer's unhooked, got the joystick there. I always take that out because it just gets in the way when you're doing anything other than spraying. I would describe this as intermittent at the moment. Oh, is it still not? Oh, look at that one! Oh, look at it! Because then one's doing naught. That's the one that didn't have a filter in it. Right, so we've narrowed it down. There's one, two, three, four working, which is more than the worst. So it's the middle. 
middle two in the end one. I, d I don't get why there's not, oh, water coming out of this. Yeah, take the back of the body off. Yeah, so that's the trouble. We got trouble actually in the schnozzles. There's water coming out there. So that up there must be blocked. It needs a... Nearly. Just not quite. Nearly but not quite. Let's give it a... Oh. You just want to alter that, right? Yeah, make it go a bit softer. Right, try that. Oh, it's, it's working now. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, it just wasn't... It was obviously it's the same as this. And that, like you say, that... There one, you are. You, got, you can alter the pressure on them. Yeah. So that if I screw that up tight, he wasn't working. You let it back a tiny little bit. There's no drip coming out, but he's fanning. Well, we've got it now. Right. That end one. So if you if I undo that end one ever so slightly, or has he got? A, so he's not got a proper fan. No. I think it needs. If you take the end out. There you are. Out. Well, we want thirty seconds. Yeah, then we'll then we'll double it. <laughs> Seems logical. There you see, so that's if it doubled, 550 yeah. well at the litres per minute, double that, that's 1100. One. Yeah. Well, what, what it should do in that pressure is 650. How do you turn this all off? That one? Yeah. It should do 650 at that pressure. Oh. Um, so what it's showing is me pressure gauges. A bit all over the place. Test number two. Stop! Literally, it's made subtle difference. You got more. Yeah, more. Right, we're now on pink nozzles. Bill's getting absolutely covered in water. <laughs> very, very, very fine spread. So, 400. Just that it'll have to be absolutely still as still as still. Mm. I'll tell you what I'll do. Now I've sussed it all out. We're going to try another colour. <laughs> no, what I was going to do is, where did we put all the yellows we took out? There's four of them here. Right, so we've got the sprayer all going for Phil whenever he wants to go spraying. It's obviously a bit windy now today, probably here. Um, if you're on the quad bike doing it, you don't want any wind because you end up with a face full of roundel, which isn't very nice. So I'm going to give the tractor a quick wash. I haven't had a wash in a little while, covered in dust from harvest. So we'll uh, give it a bit of a birthday. We're all clean. Craig's bringing in straw. And a nice load of oats straw there. Some window wiper action going. Find a nice hole in the shed for this one to live in. I'm going away for a week, but by the time you guys see this, I'll actually be home again. So it's a holiday, but it's not a holiday. Um, yeah, we'll park this one up in the shed. It'll be uh, here for the guys if they want to use it whilst I'm away. If not, I'll be ready for when we come back. I think that will probably conclude today's video guys thank you very much for watching uh, as i said earlier if anyone knows the name of the hitch that we use on the sprayer let me know in the comments because i have no idea what it is um loads of cool stuff coming up when i get back from holiday you guys already see me but we'll be hopefully working up some um arable ground making it chit so we can spray it off ready to get the next crop in the ground we'll be silaging got a second cut to do at some point so the forager will be back out and uh, yeah there's loads of cool stuff going on if you like the video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't already then please do subscribe to the channel it is completely free to subscribe here on youtube um check out the links in the description uh instagram snapchat tiktok all that good stuff it's all down there for you guys to follow if you want to and yeah thank you for watching i'll see you on another video very soon cheerio